Do you love playing Engineer but hate dealing with projectiles? Do you love the idea of shooting energy balls through the air like this were some kind of anime? Are you a hipster married to using whatever weapon is least popular in the community regardless of how viable said weapon is in the first place? If you said yes to any of the following, I have the guide for you. How yin's doing, I'm an Ian, and this is my TF2 How to Kill Streak series, where we look at the best and worst TF2 has to offer and I show you how to get a kill streak with it, because everything is a bad idea until it works. Today, as you could tell by reading the title of this video, we'll be covering the short circuit. So without further ado, let's get into it. The short circuit is crafted using a reclaimed metal, a scrap metal, and a gunslinger, making it the first weapon I've seen in TF2 with a crafting recipe that makes any sense. However, I recommend just trading half a scrap metal on scrap.tf if you're interested in getting this thing for yourself. Assuming, of course, you haven't already gotten this weapon through a random drop, that is. As for what this thing does, it shoots a pathetic electrical burst that deals next to no damage and consumes 5 metal per use, making this thing's primary fire next to useless unless you're spamming it on the cart. You heard me right, I said metal. This thing uses the same resource pool the engineer uses to build his buildings. Because of this, I advise NEVER using this thing alongside the Widowmaker, since at that point you'll be completely dependent on a single resource pool to the point that anyone who knows what the word logistics means can tell you why you'd be restricted to melee only for about 90% of the time. In fact, when used in conjunction with the short circuit, the Widowmaker looks so bad that the Pompson almost looks viable in comparison. Almost. But not quite. But enough about what primaries to use alongside this weapon, we have yet to cover the reason why people actually use this thing in the first place. It's Altfire. You see, when you right-click with this weapon, you fire an energy ball that destroys projectiles. From rockets to sticky bombs and pretty much anything in between, if it's not a player or a bullet and it's flying through the air, this energy ball will delete it from existence upon contact. The downsides to this are 1. It can be reflected back at you by enemy pyros, so be mindful of them when they're in the area, and 2. It costs 65 metal to use, meaning you're gonna only fire this thing off 3 times at most before you run out of metal unless you pick up some ammo packs along the way. This means you'll need to carefully delegate your metal between upgrading your building and building up your sentry nest, and shooting energy balls at your enemy to ensure your sentry nest doesn't come down with a case of explosions. Is that contagious? <laughs> Seriously, I don't want to catch that! If the problem you're dealing with is just a lone soldier shooting at you from across the map with a rocket launcher, you're usually better off just hitting your sentry with a wrench to repair the damage. However, if you're dealing with sticky spam or other forms of concentrated fire from the enemy team, you may want to use the short circuit's energy balls to prevent the damage altogether. However, good players know to kill the engineer first, then the buildings. After all, sentries can be rebuilt faster than players can respawn usually. However, what many forget is it's not always about your buildings. More often than not, it's about you and your team. For you see, many maps, especially older maps like Dust Bowl, force players into choke points that encourage players to just spam projectiles down them like coins in a wishing well, where every wish is, I wish to get a multi-kill. And in these situations, the short circuit is the perfect anti-spam weapon, making it ideal for both stopping explosive classes from dominating that sweet of a scout, and finding that cloaked spy who's trying to rush down that choke point like an idiot. That's right, this thing is surprisingly good at tracking spies down since the ball is quite big and you can easily show at whoever they're hitting. So if you end up hitting a cloaked spy and the ball is moving in the same direction as them, you can get a pretty solid view of where they are and where they're going. The downside to the ball's large size, however, is that it can easily end up clipping around crates, the cart, or other parts of the map geometry and just cease to exist, because while it can phase through players like a ghost or something, it cannot phase through map geometry whatsoever. Which makes firing this thing off from behind the cart a little bit tricky. This is also the best weapon the engineer has for when you're getting spawn camp. After all, with the supply cabinets being on hand, you have functionally infinite metal, meaning you can just fire your energy balls out with wreck was abandoned into the enemy opposition, ensuring that any projectiles they're relying on just won't be a thing whatsoever. So if the reason you can't get out of spawn has something to do with a demo man in a Crits Creek medic, or a soldier using the banners in a Crits Creek medic, well then you have a nice hard counter right here. 
And that's kind of why demo mains hate this weapon, because it just kinda hard counters them completely, because grenades and sticky bombs can be deleted by it, and let's be honest, going melee in a game where everyone has a gun is not the best idea. And once you finally do get out of spawn, stick near the cart and just start spamming away, since the cart gives you functionally infinite metal as well, meaning you can just delete any projectile spam on the enemy team, meaning you can effectively ensure that your team is guaranteed victory unless the enemy team has some sort of form of hit scan to reliably kill you with, like a heavy or a competent sniper. However, if the enemy opposition isn't using projectiles whatsoever, you're better off using your other secondaries rather than the short circuit. However, for this to happen, that would require the enemy team to have exactly zero soldiers and demo man. Which, given how prolific soldier mains are in the TF2 community, is pretty much never going to happen unless the thing you're dealing with on the enemy team is a bunch of sniper bots or everyone going heavy on the cart, in which case you're better off just leaving the server and trying to find a game elsewhere. All in all, I give the short circuit an underrated out of 10. This thing might not be the best weapon in existence, but it's better than folks give it credit for. However, it's quite sad because you basically never see this thing being used unless the player in question is next to a source of functionally infinite ammo such as the payload cart or if they're getting spawn camp. Which is quite a shame since while it is good in those situations, it's still viable outside of them as well. And despite that, you never see people using it to its fullest potential, so do me a favor and give this weapon a try. Trust me, you won't regret it. Also, while recording for this video, I discovered that during setup, you can actually fire this thing at the spawn room doors and actually hurt people through it sometimes. You're unlikely to get any kills this way, but hey, it's more damage than you would have done otherwise during setup. That's all for now. Like the video if you did, subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one, comment what weapons Ian's want to see me cover in the future. I've been Ian, and this has been my TF2 How to Kill Street Guide to the Short Circuit. And stay tuned, the demo pan is coming up next. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,